This man is Ricky Smith. He lives and works in an area of Birmingham called Borsal Heath. In many ways, his job is like those of many other people in Birmingham. He helps look after some of the old houses and streets in the city's inner core. But in many other ways, Ricky's job is very different. He's what is known as an area caretaker, which means that not only must he have the skills of a maintenance man, but from time to time he must also fulfill the roles of advice worker, plumber, community worker, joiner and friend to the residents in the area where he works. Ricky is one of the 16 area caretakers in Birmingham. This film is about the work of these men and women. It raises a number of questions about the way many council services could be provided in the future. Because the results of a wholesale clearance and redevelopment of Birmingham slums had had such a disastrous result upon the community, it was decided that urban renewal was to be undertaken, and as far as possible, by consultation with the residents. To this end, residents associations were set up by the project teams throughout the inner city, and it was to these groups that urban renewal turned to undertake the management of the area caretakers. One of the early criticisms of the urban renewal process that was thrown up by the residents associations was that although it was progressively improving houses and the environment, it left untouched problems such as maintenance of derelict sites, back alleyways and street lighting. Residents tended to feel that if the city council could not deal effectively with these problems, there was little point in improving the environment at all. What residents were asking for would have required a very substantial change in the organisation and practices of council departments. Something entirely new was required. A means of instituting fast and effective treatment of problems that were costly and time-consuming to traditional council departments, as complementing existing services and closing gaps in the system. And so the City Council proposed to the Department of the Environment that they should appoint an area caretaker to one area on an experimental basis. The first caretaker was Nick Wigg. At the time of my appointment, I had been living in Grange Park for three years. I had no precise job description, simply a brief to work towards residential participation in environmental maintenance. It was felt that 30 years of deprivation and blight, slum landlordism and derelict sites, had eroded the residential view of environmental responsibility to the point where housing improvement and environmental renewal was not enough to reawaken the residents' consciousness to this responsibility. What was needed was an example, the formalisation of the good neighbour syndrome. Someone who had lived and worked in the same area, someone to care and take trouble over the small everyday problems of a blighted area. My main concern was to convince the people on my patch that while I was a council employee, I was also one of them, and to try and break down the attitude which said, oh, the council will never really take notice of our problems. The main objectives of the area caretaker project were threefold to respond to environmental problems as they arose or were identified by the residents association, to motivate residents to take an interest in their immediate environment and most importantly to facilitate liaison between residents and council departments and to break down resident apathy to the city council. Yes, yes, we wanted that incentive to do something to, to um, improve these things. You get a little bit despondent if uh, nothing's been done and then you see Jim comes along and does these little jobs and he encourages people to do that extra, to keep the place looking smart. He's repaired gates and put those in working order. He's um, cut the hedges. He gets rid of the litter in the road. And uh, anything that he thinks will improve the, the, the area, he does so, that job and you know, collects the rubbish and gets it taken away and anything like that. I think having a residence association, that you haven't got one gaffer, you've got thousands of them in the area, all know who you are and what, what, what you're there for. I think it, 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 
I think the, the resident association caretakers are, are a better scheme rather than having council. This view is reiterated by Councillor Charlton, Chairman of the Urban Renewal Committee. Uh, I'm personally keen to see the local involvement being paramount uh, as far as area caretakers and many other schemes are concerned. So I, I've, I've doubts at this stage whether there is a, any need for any uh, more um, direct role for the City Council. Cindy Harris in Moseley has different problems. There's a lot of multi-occupied houses, a lot of housing association properties, but also a lot of privately owned and privately rented accommodation. I would think that probably half the houses in the area are rented and in multi-occupation. Just the cost of materials. Um, and then not in every case. If there's a particular case of hardship, then we go back and discuss it with the committee and they may say, well, go ahead and we'll pay for the materials. Uh, obviously, there's no charge for our labour. I think the problem is to appeal to something that really does interest residents as a whole or certain people in general. We've had street cleanups on single streets in the area. Over a weekend, we've had a skip dropped and made a lot of effort to get residents out on the street, clearing up the back alleys as well as their own gardens. And that's worked quite well. I think if you can present it in terms of a positive effect on the area and therefore on the residents' lives in general, um, you do get a response. Ricky Smith also has to deal with environmental problems. Most of my problem is rubbish, yeah. clear and rubbish and so on. There's no stop for that. It's an ongoing problem. It's a never-ending problem. Never ending problem. I you imagine know? you're beginning to pick up a bit of air. Yes, I, yes, I can speak a bit of Urdu and a bit of Hindi now. Really? Yeah. I see, that must yeah. be a great help. Yeah, it is. Because there are lots of uh, women, you know, when you go to them about anything, they don't want to open the door unless uh, somebody can speak a bit of their language. Oh, no, I'm picking up a bit of it now. Bill James in Selly Oak demonstrates the flexibility of locally based caretakers in that he has started to involve school children in an environmental scheme in an attempt to introduce the idea of environmental responsibility at an age when people are most receptive to new ideas. We've got the school children from the Rattlebarn School uh, involved in it. They're going to uh, grow plants from seed. Uh, which they will then be able to sell at a low cost to the elderly. Also, it's educational for the children to know how plants start and go on. Whilst it is possible for caretakers to work towards achieving their objectives of responding to local problems and motivating residents without reference to the City Council, it is important to maintain a tangible contact with the council officers in order to achieve any kind of effective liaison between the council and resident groups. To achieve this, the caretakers meet with the officers from Urban Renewal to discuss problems and devise strategies to overcome them. These meetings are held monthly so that problems do not have to wait too long for a solution. The sheer scale of some of the problems caretakers are asked to tackle means that ad hoc assistance is important to getting the job done within a reasonable time. Since speed of response is one of the caretaker's main claims, it is important to his or her credibility that individual projects do not take too long in their execution. Nearly all of the caretakers have managed to involve the local community to help in these circumstances, but sometimes the size of the project in hand requires more full-time help. To this end, caretakers have taken advantage of the many community help schemes, such as Action Force. But many of them have turned to the manpower services for assistance of this kind. The area caretaker management structure is well able to monitor and control young people on youth opportunity schemes and the personalities of the area caretaker ensures that a very real element of training is available to these young people. But what do these projects cost to fund? For the current financial year, 
The 16 area caretakers will cost the Birmingham Inner City Partnership a total of £146,000. This breaks down for each project into an annual revenue funding of £9,125, which includes a salary of £4,326. In addition, each project received a capital grant of £1,800 towards the purchase of a vehicle and tools. Since the caretakers are covering most of the declared areas in the inner city, these costs represent very good value for money. But for them to be really effective, there is a need to appoint extra caretakers to assist in the coverage of the larger areas. For example, Ricky Smith in Borsal Heath covers an area of some 9,000 properties. But what of the future? Clearly, the existing caretakers have shown even in a short time that the area caretaker principle does work. The objectives they were set are being achieved. It is no longer an experimental shot in the dark. It is now a working practice that can be applied to any area in the country that has similar needs. However, it is a practice that is still heavily reliant on inner city partnership funding. What is going to be important to the continuance and expansion of the area caretaker programme is the establishment of a permanent framework within the urban renewal programme. I'm quite sure all of us involved think it's a very worthwhile contribution to the inner city. Um, we all uh, feel and hope that this will be maintained for the future. How this is to be achieved is uncertain at present, but what is certain is that the acceptance of the effectiveness of the area caretaker principle by the central government and the Department of the Environment in particular is critical to the survival of that principle and that inner city partnership funding after the expiry of current grants will be essential until it is possible to set up a more permanent funding structure. Yes, you know. 